Homelessness among veterans is a growing concern for Congress because veterans make up 23% of the adult homeless population. If three homeless adults are randomly selected, what is the probability that at least one of the three are veterans? All right, so when I try to solve this problem, I need to first, of course, identify what they're asking me for, and it looks like it's a probability question. I think that's pretty clear. But then I have this great phrase, which is a useful key word, or a set of words, it says the probability that at least one. And so without reading the rest of the sentence, as soon as I see that, I say, oh wow, the probability of at least one is a, is a special technique of finding probability. And if I use that specific approach, it'll probably make this problem a lot easier. So we'll talk about what that approach is, but let's first finish the problem. It says, what's the probability that at least one of the three selected are veterans? Okay, good. So if I write out the probability statement here, I want to use this phrase at least one in the statement because that's what it's asking for. So the, prob the problem should read the probability that at least one is a veteran. Okay, so at least one is a vet. Now, because I have this phrase at least one, I know there's actually a very simple approach to solve the problem. Well, I shouldn't say simple because it's actually not easy, but it's much easier than the other way we would have to tackle the problem if we didn't use this approach. So whenever you can use this approach, probability of at least one, it's probably going to save you time. So the way we're gonna do it then is to say, okay, well that corresponds to a formula on our formula card, and that formula should say one minus the probability that none are a, and you fill in whatever was here, right? So it's the probability of at least one is a cat, it would be none are cats, right? If it's probability of at least one is a dog, probability, one minus the probability that none are dogs, right? So in this case, we're gonna say none of them are vets, right? Okay, so what we're using essentially is a rule of complements here to solve the problem, because it's gonna make the problem a lot simpler to solve that way. All right, from here it'll be one minus the probability that none are vets. So we're saying in order to get this probability that we want, we've got to approach it by doing one minus this probability. So basically my work is to figure out this probability, the probability that none of the three are vets. So again, we'll go back to how many were selected. It looks like three of them were selected. So this probability is essentially the probability that all three of the randomly selected homeless people are not veterans. So because we're selecting three, we're going to need three fractions or three probabilities multiplied together. That is the rule, right? If we randomly select three items, we'll need three probabilities and then we'll have to be multiplied at some point to solve that part of the problem. All right, so then we look at this first fraction. We ask, what is that? Well, that's our first homeless person, right? And then we ask ourselves, you know, how do we want that to turn out? Well, according to this, we want none of them to be vets. So first homeless person is not, right? Is not a vet and we're looking for that probability. Now, it tells us that 23% of the population of homeless adults are veterans, so that means that the complement, or the leftover amount, is 77%, and those are the ones that are not veterans. So the chance that we end up having a homeless person who's not a vet is 77%, or written as a decimal, 0.77. Now, for the next fraction, it's basically, or the next probability position, it's basically the same thing. It's not the first homeless person this time, it's the second and we're looking for the same thing, the probability they're not a vet, because we want none of these three to be vets. So we're gonna say 0.77 again, and then likewise for the last one. So again, it'll be 0.77. So to solve this problem, we have to do one minus 0.77 to the third power, and that will end up giving us the answer. So let's work that out and see what we get. So we'll have one minus 0.77 raised to the third power, and you end up getting the answer 0.543 to three decimal places. So 54.3% or approximately 0.543. Okay, now, why do we have to solve it this way? Why is that approach the best? Well, first of all, again, I'll remind you that if you have that key phrase in your problem, probability of at least one, you should definitely use this approach. But why is that approach necessary or useful here? Well, it turns out that the reason why it's useful is because there are lots of ways to have at least one vet, right? So let's just sketch this out for a minute to think about how you would get that. So think about the cases. It could be something like, you know, vet, and then I'm gonna say not vet, not vet. That's a scenario where you end up getting three homeless people selected and one of them is a vet and two of them are not. But that can also be done by you know, having the first not be a vet, but the second is a vet, and then the third is not a vet. Again, still one veteran, so it meets the requirement that at least one vet. And then you also have what? Not vet, not vet, vet. That's a scenario we'd have to calculate the probability for, and each of these would have to be added together. 
So that's three problems that have to be done. They have to be added together. But that's not the only way we could get at least one vet. We could also have it by having two of them be vets. That'd still be at least one vet, because at least one vet means one or more, right? So you could have something like vet, vet, not vet, right? Which would be this also, you know, equivalent to vet, not vet, vet. And then also, finally, you would need not vet, vet, vet. So again, three scenarios there. And then finally, you'd still have one more to consider. There'd still be one more to put in here. You could get at least one vet by all three being vets, right? So each of these is a separate probability problem, and you'd have to add them all together, right? So you'd end up having to do seven problems, right? And add the results of those seven calculations together to get the same answer we got relatively simply by using this probability of at least one approach. So my recommendation is when you see the phrase at least one, or whenever that scenario arises and you can use this rule, you should, because it's almost always faster to do it that way. And essentially what we're using is a complement to solve the problem. So we have this one thing that's very hard to get, so we go after its complement because that's easier. And since we know it's a complement, you know, essentially we can su just subtract that answer from 100% to get the answer we're looking for, right? So in other words, what we're saying here is the only way you don't get at least one vet in your sample of three homeless people is if none of them are homeless, right? Because any other scenario, if you get either even one of them to be a vet, you've met the requirement of at least one. So the only way that doesn't occur, and the only way that doesn't happen is if none of the three are veterans. So that's the complement of at least one. And that's what's nice about this rule is that that complementary relationship helps us solve the problem in a much more efficient manner.